setting is brand new, but the prize remains the same. An affirmation of gridiron greatness by earning the title champion of the Southeastern Conference. In a storied rivalry that dates all the way back to 1892, here comes something unique, a rematch for the ages. Just a few weeks ago for Georgia, it seemed their wildest dream was coming true. To the four and into the end zone, touchdown! An undefeated season was on their mind. And then, the Deep South's oldest rivalry kicked off. And for the Bulldogs, <laughs> that dream turned into a nightmare. The Tigers' improbable mid-season renaissance has been fueled by their indomitable spirit and iron will. Carry on, there's the jump pass, touchdown! But this year, in this, the most demanding of conferences, it turns out beating your most ancient of rivals once is not enough. For Georgia and Auburn, <laughs> it's bragging rights be damned. Take two is for the championship of the SEC. And so it brings us to Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. And it's the SEC championship on CBS presented by Dr. Pepper. The Georgia Bulldogs and the Auburn Tigers for the 122nd time. The Deep South's oldest rivalry, and we've got a rematch for the ages here in Atlanta today. Take a look at the college football playoff rankings. Clemson and Miami has a date later tonight. So does Wisconsin and Ohio State. Oklahoma's taking care of their business right now, and that brings us to Auburn and Georgia here for the SEC title. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brad Nussler. My partner, as always, is Gary Danielson. Garrett starts back in the spring. It works its way through summer, and there's 14 teams in this league that have the dream of making it to the first Saturday in December here in Atlanta. And in this case, it's not only for the conference championship, it's for a spot in that final four. And it's a rematch. How about hmm. that? How cool is that? You know, Brad, for the first 11 weeks of this season, I think the story of college football was... Georgia. I think it was. And then for the last three weeks, the story has been... Auburn. Yeah, how good are they? Are they that good at home? Or can they that good playing away from home? We will find out. And how good are they with their top tailback? Kind of a question mark. on Johnson's been the biggest story this week, I think, with the exception of the coaching carousel, right? I think you're right. But, you know, for Carryon Johnson to be Carryon Johnson, he plays physical. He doesn't use his legs. He uses that straight arm. When you come up to make a tackle, he makes you pay. If he's not able to use that arm, even like he did against Alabama last week, how good will this offense be without that running attack? That's the big story all week. Well, and the big story and the big question mark, and we'll take you back and show you why he's a question mark health-wise. Yeah, it happened, we think, maybe right here when Ronnie Harrison put that helmet on that arm, that left arm, but then later, Carrion Johnson felt a twinge and kind of shut it down. And then all week it was, how good is Carrion? And of course, no one's going to tell you how good he is, but I'm going to speculate this. As you watch him go off there last game, if that arm isn't falling off, he's going to play. He had 167 yards on the ground and a screen pass touchdown against Georgia the first time around. Let's take ourselves back now for Georgia three weeks ago. Top rushing team in the conference. Couldn't do anything against the Auburn defense. Everybody on the Georgia team has to play better. And if they do, their two stars will show up. They were shut down, but they can't block and run at the same time. For the offense to work, that offense has to be more varied. I agree, but they're not going to not use those guys. They have to be the stars. And here come the 11-1 Bulldogs of Georgia. Their home in Athens, about 70 miles from here. 
and making their first SEC title game appearance since 2012. Allie LaForce is with Kirby Smart. Coach, you said earlier this week, you don't shake a memory. How has the memory of the loss to Auburn gotten this team ready for this big moment? Well, it's helped keep our team focused and grounded. They realize and respect their opponent, but they want another opportunity, and that's what they've got today. Auburn did something that no other team was able to do this season when they shut down Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle. How do you put them in a better position to succeed today? Try to get them some more open runs, loosen the defense up some. Got to get the ball in the perimeter a little bit and put a little more pressure on the quarterback. But both those guys will come out and give us all they got. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. You saw Auburn take the field at 10-2. 7-1 in conference play, and they're making their first trip to this SEC title game since 2013. And Allie's with Gus Malzahn right now. Coach, you told us all week that on Johnson would be a game-time decision. After watching him warm up, what was the decision? Yeah, he's going to play. He's going to start the game. He's feeling good. We'll see how it goes. And how much more pressure does that put on Jared if on is limited? How does that change the equation for him? Yeah, we got a lot of confidence with other guys. they got a lot of practice. they got a lot of game reps, and I think we'll be ready. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. There's the news we wanted. Number 21 will be in the starting lineup. Georgia won the toss and deferred. <laughs> So Rodrigo Blankenship will tee it up. Auburn will touch the football first here in the SEC title game. Oh, is there some electricity in this building? Igben Nagani and Martin are back deep for Auburn. And Blankenship, as he's done so many times, knocks it out of the back of the end zone, so the Tigers will take over at the 25-yard line. Lineman of the week three weeks ago against Georgia. Auburn actually substituted there, and the officials really didn't allow Georgia to substitute and get lined up. I think they properly slowed it down to not give Auburn advantage on that snap. Chandler Cox in the backfield as well. Actually an H-back on the right. Slayton in motion, play fake, and a throwback screen, and George is all over that. DeAndre Baker with the open field tackle. Well, how different because Auburn really hurt Georgia in the first game with screens, slow screens, every type of perimeter throw, and they're chasing it down now. Too much zone last time. That time, Georgia said, we're playing man-to-man -man and we're challenging these receivers. Opening third down, third and nine. Auburn 46% of their third down conversions on the year. Now, can Georgia find a pass rush like Auburn hurt Georgia in game one? They're going to bring an extra guy or two instead of got rid of it. Incomplete intended for Slayton, and it was Baker in coverage. Yeah, flags down, though. I think he grabbed him with his right hand. Pass interference. Number 18, defense. Kelly includes an automatic first down. Right to the outside, it was DeAndre Baker, number 18. One-on-one -on -one to the outside with Slayton. A little bit of a contact, and ironically... He would have had to do that. Yeah, ironically also, remember it was Kirby Smart who was complaining about the holding from the Auburn defenders in game one. So Baker made one good play and then accounted for that penalty that gives Auburn a first down at the 37-yard line. You can see Georgia will substitute every time Auburn does to slow the pace down. Big shift there as Stidham goes back into the shotgun. Carry on Johnson off the left side, almost broke into the secondary, got about seven. Bring up second down and three as we take a look at Georgia defensively. And, and uh, Austin Golson, two seniors that have seen a lot of football. That's the guys to send out. Here's the first wildcat of the day. Carry on Johnson's going to get off to Eli Stove, and Stove has got a first down. Auburn down to the 35 yard line. God, what a great changeup for Gus Malzahn. You know you're going to go Wildcat. George has been for three weeks thinking about this Wildcat and carry on Johnson. So what do they do? Hand it off a beautiful call. And again, substitutions on both sides. Georgia gets their two last players to hustle off. And it's first down Auburn. 
Started this drive at their own 25. They've gotten a first down by penalty. And again, Stove on the end around. Georgia had him wrapped up, but he broke out of there and got four yards. Carry on Johnson virtually every game this year has been a big game, but didn't play at Clemson with a hamstring problem and then really came to light in those games. LSU, A&M, Georgia, and last week against Alabama. And I think the rule is that the defensive team has the right to comfortably substitute. And comfortably is a little different for some of those 320 pounders exactly. than it is a linebacker. Second down and six. Play action. Stidham getting some pressure. Throws on the run. And he got his man down around the 12-yard line. And it's Cox, the H-back, with a catch. Chandler Cox was running the wheel route. He was wide open for five seconds as Auburn starts to hurry up. I got to be careful to run when Auburn goes fast. I got to tell you that. Down to the 10-yard line. Stidham's going to go out to Slayton. He broke the tackle. Oh, oh boy, man. did he get hit by Roquan Smith. All right. Darius is going, uh, I'd like to start going deep on these routes again. <laughs> wow. This is a guy we talked about on the Georgia defense and is the leader without a doubt. Not just a leading tackler, but makes the calls and delivers the wood. They're in the Wildcat again with Carrion Johnson on second and goal. Whoop, high snap. Fake the jump pass and now kind of head to the pylon. Not going to get there. Georgia drops him for a loss of one. Pretty creative. Why not try it, right? You try the jump pass one time, why not fake it and get outside? But Roquan Smith gets to the edge. Lorenzo Carter can run down those type of plays. And Georgia with a great defensive play. Maybe their best defensive play outside the two quick screens of this drive. Gary Ann Johnson, three carries, 11 yards. He lost one there. Third down and goal. Stidham back in at quarterback. Last time on third down, they blitzed. Will they do it again? Stidham play fake, end zone touchdown. Nate Craig Myers. Nate Craig Myers had the jump pass from Carrion Johnson a week ago. Today, it's from his quarterback, six yards and a score. Well, Aaron Davis, number 35, has one-on-one -on -one coverage, middle of your screen. He gets beat inside, the only place he could not get beat. And when you've got a trigger man throwing that type of strikes like Stidham is right now, those are easy. Daniel Carlson's 195th straight extra point is up and good. As you saw, season low total yards and rushing yards three weeks ago against Auburn. Here's a toss sweep. Nick Chubb. Chubb got a big opening. Whoa, one more guy, and he might have been really off to the races. Auburn's defense has given up only two first quarter touchdowns all year. One of them was to Georgia on the dogs opening drive three weeks ago at Jordan Hare. There's a toss sweep, and Sonny Michelle dropped the ball, but it went out of bounds. Lucky for him. You know, last time in the big game, when Georgia was number one on the road, we thought they were a little tight to yeah. maybe in, you know, all of the game. But, you know, these guys have played in so many big games now. I just can't really attribute that to it. Sonny Michelle just took his eye off it. As simple as that. So his eyes will be on the sideline, and DeAndre Swift, the freshman, will check into the Georgia backfield on second down and ten. Brown's going to flip it out, and Swift never turned around. Would have hit him in stride had he turned around, I think. Well, you know, I think Swift saw Trey Williams coming out to the outside and avoiding the pick, and I think Swift said, I'm going to go deep. I think he thought he would cut, cut underneath it and it made an adjustment, and Jake Fromm had no chance on that one. Almost got him right in the back of the helmet. Yeah, you know, freshman to freshman could be David dangerous. Yeah, exactly, in a game of this magnitude. Yes. So third down and 10. Georgia, the top third down team in the SEC, fifth in the country. But they've got to get all of this one. And here comes that rush from Auburn. Fromm hangs in. Got it. Complete. Nicole Hardman at a first down. Well, how about that throw? We talked about Jared Stidham. 
putting that ball perfectly on target. Good protection this time. Nobody at his feet. A perfect throw to the outside. Nico Hardman, his 19th catch of the year. Big one for a first down into Auburn territory for the first time for the Bulldogs. And that's a good cover guy, Carlton Davis, on him. That was a great route by Nico Hardman. From under center with Sony Michelle behind him. Play action. Here comes the heat. Down he goes. Sacked by Trey Matthews, a former Bulldog. I think anybody on the defense, if that happens again, it won't be good news for Georgia yeah, fans. That's for sure. And you look, you got the tight end right there willing to help. Watch him chip to help the tackle on the play. There's the chip. From... And this time it comes from the other side. Dontavious Russell with a sack. So the Auburn defense, like they did three weeks ago, putting the heat on the Georgia quarterback. And that's the big problem with this Auburn defensive line. You cannot key on just one player. They've got four elite pass rushers up front. And if you help on one side, the pressure comes from the other side. All four of them had a sack the first time around. All four starting defensive linemen. Georgia delayed blitz. Stidham going to fire it out in the flat to his safety valve. Carry on Johnson and Georgia runs him out of bounds. Roquan Smith with a good job to keep him contained on that sideline. Well, let's talk about this Georgia defense. Remember, they came into the game three weeks ago with such a great reputation, having a great year statistically. They just looked like they were a, a little dazed by all the motion and the quick snaps. Today, they look right on. They got their guys. They've had the one penalty that kept the drive alive. Beyond that, they are right in front of their eligible receiver or running back. Third and long. Straight four-man rush, swing pass out, carry on Johnson, Lorenzo Carter giving chase and brings him down. And it'll bring up the punting situation. So that'll bring out Aiden Marshall. Did a pretty nice job against Alabama last week, dropping three of his five punts inside the 20. I don't think he's got enough leg to do that here. And their punt return coverage has not been good, nor their kickoff return coverage. And Miko Hardman would love to have something better. His last memory would drop the ball against these guys. Miko's a number one punt returner in the conference. Takes this one at the 29 and slips and takes himself down. His knees hit. Had he kept his balance, he might have had something going on there. Quick cut. Ooh, it. Yep. Yep. Yeah, he was down. You know, this is a different field. When you're down there, there's a lot of those granulars. It's a little softer than normal. Feels a little different, I'm sure, no matter how much. You know, they had one hour of practice here. It was basically a walkthrough. I'm not surprised that we don't see a little bit more players slip like that. These two teams, Georgia had some opportunities, Gary, but they didn't, didn't capitalize. Yes, yeah, so when the first run, defender falls down. You've got at least a 50-yard play. Couldn't quite hook it up. The flea flicker's going to be a touchdown but too much pressure inside and then a missed field goal right at the end of the half i think you could probably say that georgia left 17 points on the board in the first half chubb again and he's hitting the backfield trying to get away and he's dropped for a loss first contact was dontavius russell again and we talked about Georgia's struggles in the first game. These two guys are both on their way to 1,000-yard seasons. One already has it, and that's all they did three weeks ago at Jordan-Hare. From trying to throw a screen. Sonny Michelle looking for blockers. Not going to get there. About a yard short. Well, you know what caused that screen pass right there? It was on the last third down. He got sacked. If you're Jim Cheney, you said, I do not want, to those, want one of those early feeding frenzies where you get a quarterback getting sacked and sacked and sacked. Thanks, Jim Cheney. Yep. 
Interesting here, Bryce Ramsey's coming into the game as the punter. Look out for maybe a quick snap or trying to draw Auburn offside. There you see Nizalak go into a slot and Ramsey is set up at a deep shotgun. He putted for Georgia a year ago and now Auburn takes a timeout. Yeah, number 12 Second in the game. The Auburn's going to play it safe. Good time out there by the Tigers to talk that formation over. Downtown here. Nizalek to punt. He's been one of the better punters of the SEC. Grad transfer from Columbia. He's had only 10 returns for 52 yards this year, and he doesn't allow one there either to Stephen Roberts. So Auburn's got it back on offense. At the 24-yard line with a touchdown lead. Stidham to throw on first down. Nope. Going to run on first down. And he's got some room. He's got a first down. Oakland Smith tracked him down, but I think they're going to move the chains on this one. And that's the beauty of what Jared Stidham is bringing to the offense. Uh, we've talked about this so much that Auburn, traditionally under Gus, has had the running option. Oh, throw down the sideline, and Stove has got another Auburn first down. What a great adjustment by Eli Stove and Jared Stidham. It was supposed to be a quick screen out here, but when it's blown up, the adjustment is made, and they get a big play out of it. What a heads-up play by both of those players. And uh, Johnson got a couple. That's something you cannot teach. It's I, thought a, was, I thought it was going to be picked off. Well, perfect elevation on the ball, just high enough over Lorenzo Carter, who goes about 6-5 on the play. But remember, that was supposed to be a wide receiver screen and two players adjusting on the fly. I wow. Guess, I guess Stove's hands aren't bothering him as much no, as Allie thought. Couldn't drop that one. <laughs> there he is in motion across the field on second down and eight. Carry on Johnson, and now a flea flicker. Stidham's got it back. Loads, reloads, and then throws late. Oh, right to the offensive and lineman that right. time. There come the flags. Darius James is the last guy, and it's going to be intentional grounding. But you know what? It was supposed to go to Chandler Cox. And this time, it was Stone. Georgia stopped the big play before it got started. Watch Chandler Cox, number 27, come out, come out. And just as he leaves the picture, he's going to go up foul and he's covered. Either team on the team. Illegal touching, number 78 of the offense. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Using his body to punish the passer into the ground. Number 13 of the defense. The penalty's offset. Second down. We'll do it all again. That has been a new emphasis in all of football. The big defensive linemen can't use their weight on the quarterback. That's when those quarterbacks have those collarbones pop. As ask Aaron Rodgers. I know the Georgia fans think it's not a good call, but that is an emphasized call and the correct call. And the penalties on Jonathan Ledbetter for hey. driving Stidham to the turf. And for Georgia, gets out there and gets in position. Third down and three. Davis is the motion man. Carry on Johnson. Got the first down with great second effort. Oh, look at that right at the end. Another shot on Carry on Johnson. Remember, the word is he has bad shoulders. And he took a late hit on that play right at the end of it. Watch him squirt through. And then I think it was DeAndre Baker. Watch the last one. Have another at the end of one. We'll return to Atlanta after this message and a word from your local station. Set to start the second quarter of the SEC Championship on CBS, presented by Dr. Pepper. Auburn with a touchdown lead. And the ball just inside the 30. Second down and three. Cam Martin in the backfield gets another carry and a first down run. So he's come in for the last couple of plays with Kerryon Johnson having carried the last snap of the second of the first quarter rather and there was the little bit of added yep. touch and it was on his right arm that's where the rumors are that he's suffering that right shoulder problem and he really was in a little pain as he went off and uh, 
you know, Cam Martin, you talk to Gus, no matter how many times you talk to him, he says Cam is a good football player, just doesn't have a lot of experience and doesn't have a lot of size to take carry the workload like carry on does. Or to be a pass blocker. All right, that's another problem. So far, Stidham's perfect. In the red zone at the 18. Martin took a shot from Roquan Smith, but he had a good gain on the play as we check in with Allie. All right, Al, thanks. All right, tackle is shifted out. One of those gimmick formations. That's offensive tackle right there. Golson, number 73. Stidham pumps. Brings it back down, throws across his body, and throws it out of bounds. Yeah, well defended by Georgia. They've seen all these tricks. They've adjusted to them and made no easy throws. The you know, I actually think that Mel Tucker defensive coordinator Kirby Smart said, if they beat us, they're going to beat us down the field. I'm tired of looking at those wide receiver yeah. screens. They have taken that away. There's Mel in the red jacket. Georgia's red zone defense best in the conference. Let's see if they can get a stop on third down and six. That was the first incompletion thrown by Jared Stidham today, and he threw that one away on purpose. Ryan Davis in motion. Lorenzo Carter trying to put heat up the middle from the backside, and the ball is out. Still loose. Georgia might have this. Looked like Auburn was going to get on top of it, but I'm not sure now. Neither of the officials, it's Georgia ball. Davin Bellamy's the guy that caused the fumble. And that saved three points. Remember in game one, Georgia got a fumble to save three points as well, but this time it was forced instead of it. Bellamy comes right around the corner this time, and he beats a good football player in Austin Golson. Gets around it and retreats back inside. Boy, that clock, that mental clock, when you're in that position right there, that's how Jarrett Stidham started this season against Clemson, holding on to it a little too long, and a play that for sure is a sure three points ends up in a zero. Great stop by Georgia. Second force fumble by number 17, Davin Bellamy gives it back to the Georgia offense. And Nick Chubb. And Nick Chubb still going. That's his best run of the day, a pickup of about 17. And the best part was he ran through tackles. How many did he run through? Three of them at least. Had to fight like crazy to get back near the line of scrimmage. Oh it man, Jeff Holland in that play, Brad. He just took tight end Blazevich and put him into the backfield. This is a tough matchup. Watch Holland and watch what he does to the tight end. Bang, bang, bang. Oof. Blew up the play. We said if we call Holland's name a lot, it's not good for Georgia. It wasn't on that play. Sony Michelle in the backfield now. From on second down, wants to throw, fires. Terry Godwin made a catch, but he is lassoed by Carlton Davis. Carlton Davis, a three-year starter over on that corner spot for Auburn, forces a third down and eight. From waits, fires late, got his man. Second time he's got one to Nicole Hardman for a first down. You know, I, I made a note on my board here, believe me or not. I, I think Jeff Brom is a good thrower to the outsides of formation. I saw it against Notre Dame. You've seen it through the year. He throws the out route really well. Threw it going the other way in the first quarter, and now to Hardman for the second time, and a first down for the Dogs at their own 47-yard line. Play action. Quick slant. And it's Miko Hardman again. And Georgia's got something working. Three completions to Miko Hardman. Play action here. Fires. End zone. Just over the outstretched arms and a flag flies in. Wims was the intended receiver. Well, remember what Kirby was complaining about. He felt his receivers got Number held. Number six, defense. Penalty includes an automatic first down. Kirby, remember he was a defensive backfield coach. It's right down here. Holding, holding, holding. He felt in game one, and he gets the call right there. It was a good call. He had a whole handful of jersey, not to mention the hand fighting that was going on before that. 
at the two-yard line. Sony Michelle, the tailback in the eye. They fake the toss from end zone, wide open, not a touchdown. This is Jim Chaney's version of the jump pass. You do it a little differently. Here's the tight end right here. Now watch the strong toss. That's the jump part of it right here. Okay, here's the jump, and then here's the pass. Just do a little different angle, but the same result. Two weeks ago, I said to Jim Chaney, how come you don't use the tight end more often? He said, don't try to be an offensive coordinator. Yes. Well. Blankenship. Quite good. You were right. At least for Isaac Nada, his second touchdown catch all year. Remember, Georgia stopped Auburn on a fumble recovery. And then they took it 84 yards in seven plays. Jake Fromm nearly flawless. The touchdown to Nada were even in Atlanta. Back in Atlanta, 10-14, relating in the first half of the SEC Championship on CBS, presented by Dr. Pepper. How about those two of the best ever anywhere, not just in the SEC? Herschel Walker and Bo Jackson, a couple of Heisman Trophy winners. They could still give you 10 carries right today. I think so. Think? Yep. Each. Nick Chubb closing the gap on Kevin Falk, about to move into third place, and he could maybe catch Darren McFadden. He's never going to catch Herschel, but to be number two to Herschel in the Georgia record Ain't books, bad. he'll take that yeah. any day. Ain't bad. So an 84-yard drive after the fumble recovery. The touchdown pass tied at seven. Blackie Chip's kick will not be returned. Auburn's Tigers will bring it out to the 25. Chip's back there? I, I think that takes those two yeah, out of the Yeah, they're play. out of Yeah, they're out. Oh, I'm giving it away. Am I supposed no, to do that? Yeah, you do things like that. <laughs> Second and seven. And carry on Johnson, his first carry since it looked like he was shaken up, and he didn't have much on that one. DeAndre Walker was part of the reason. Yeah, those delayed runs. Remember we talked about how he's patient with the ball? Well, patient works unless the deep offensive line doesn't block. When the offensive line has a big whiff, you're going to get a big negative play when you're standing behind the line of scrimmage. And you're facing third down and 11. Boy, that's the second big miss by Austin Golson, number 73, left tackle in this game. He's played every position on that line except right guard over the course of the year. Can Georgia get pressure again? Stidham, they're getting some on him right now, and he's got to get it rid of it and throw it out to the sideline. And Punting time you, for Auburn. And I'll tell you, they're just not relying on three or four players. They've decided Stidham's too good to sit back. They're coming after him, okay? Perfect stops. <laughs> we'll take it if you're Auburn. 7-7 seven, seven game in Atlanta. Adam Zucker, BJ, Rick coming up in about eight and a half minutes of game time. Georgia from the 32. Sonny Michelle got a block on the corner, got the edge, and Sonny Michelle goes for about 20. Well, Charlie Werner that time, number 89, the tight end. If you're going to one wide, Werner goes in motion and gets the end man on the scrimmage, comes across and hooks it right there. What a great job to the outside. Got it to midfield, and Fromm comes up throw and complete out to Godwin, who got about five more. Charlie Warner, the guy on that block, his uncle was an All-American, Scott Warner, defensive back for the Dogs back in the Vince Dooley heydays of the 80s. Georgia back in Auburn territory at the 46. Pretty good day for Jake, huh? Seven out of eight, 76 and a touchdown. Yeah, he's gaining confidence, and you know what? The offensive line has given him confidence with good pass protection. Here comes a blitz off the corner, just flips it out to Sonny Michelle. Oh, what a move! Sonny Michelle down the sideline. Michelle inside the 20. Boy, did he plant his foot on that one. Well, that time Trey Williams, number 30, who had a man-to-man, -man, got there too slow, too much space, and Williams misses the tackle, and when Sony Michelle gets a crease, he can burn you. 
He burned him for 32 yards to the 14. Nick Chubb back in the Georgia backfield. Fromm's going to flip it out to Nick Chubb this time. And Nick, trying to head to the end zone, has got it first and goal around the four. So now it's third and goal. Last time they were in this spot, Jake Fromm threw to his tight end for a touchdown. They got a couple of them out there in Blazevich and Nauta. Yeah, and this is the spot on the field in this situation where Fromm is a threat to keep the ball. Third and goal. That's Nauta in motion. Fromm rolls, throws, got his man, Godwin, touchdown. That's got to be a pick. You've got to do it better than that, Georgia. That's too obvious. That has to be a pick. Is there a flag on the play? I don't see one. I don't see one. Oh, I do now. I do now. It's the Clemson play going the other direction. Remember against Pass Nat Alabama? Offense on the outside receiver blocking down during a forward pass. 15-yard penalty. Down. Yeah, remember the national championship game? Right. Alabama fans, good ball. Watch, the outside recruiter comes in, gets the pick on the play. I think it was Wims way out, and then Goodwin. Godwin ends up being free. Actually, you know, it was the defender and everybody just slamming together. A bump and run. He's trying to get in the way, but that's just not going to be allowed. So that negates a two-yard touchdown pass. And with a penalty, it backs it all the way up around the 18-yard line. You think you're going to, Steve Shaw, the head of the officials in our booth, you think you're going to get that one sent to the office, Mr. Shaw? He's smiling here. Third and goal at the 17. Sonny Michelle straight up the middle. Georgia plays it safe to play for the field goal and not try to get all of it here. Can we go back one more time and look at the play from up here, first look was that Wims just blocked the player, but at second look, you watch it again, and there was a lot of contact on the play. So Blankenship in to attempt the field goal. Boy, that's a different little look at it right there, isn't it, from the pylon cam, or was it one of our handhelds? Whatever it is, that was a different look at it. Blankenship, 13 out of 15 on the year, a 27-yard field goal is good. You know, listen, the more you look at this, the more if you're Javon Wims, you're saying, what do you want me to do? I'm coming inside. What you see from the booth right away is two guys get knocked down. The flag comes out. He's so open. But if you're Georgia, you're saying, I got shoved into him. Georgia does have the lead for the first time, though, on the field goal, 10-7. Malik Miller comes in. He's the better pass blocker of the two backup tailbacks. Stidham's going to roll the throne, fires a dart complete. Yeah, pretty little route there. And flags come in from the near side. That's an odd place for a penalty marker to come when the play was on the far side of the field. That's at the 45 over here, closer to us. The results of the play is a first down. First sideline warning, Georgia. So not a flag, just a warning, I guess, to alert us. So they'll try to back everybody up behind the chalk a little bit. Play action. Stidham getting some heat. Going to go deep. Aaron it out long. Intercepted by Georgia. DeAndre Baker coming back the other way. And the dogs have got it back. That was a big tackle right there, because he would have got another 20 yards. There's a flag down as well. Darius Slayton saves that. That would have been another 20 yards. John McDade will give us a call here. My question is, was there holding or something somewhere else? Again, it was not near the play, not very close. During the pass, personal foul, Grace being the fast face, the face mask, number 18 of the defense. Oh, wow. Due to the change of possession, this 15 year old penalty being forced from the previous spot with an automatic first down. Another huge penalty against Georgia, much like the first go around. 
So during the play, DeAndre Baker grabbed the face mask right there. Yes. Good and you call. know, Darius Slayton turned around to the referee. He did not know the flag was called. And you go, how could you miss that face mask? And if the referee was like a ball player, he would just point right in. <laughs> I threw it. Yes. This is the biggest third down of the game so far. Third and five, Auburn. Try to keep the drive alive and score before yeah, halftime. Here comes Georgia. Blitzing inside. Both linebackers. Here they come. It's Roquan Smith, and he's going to get to Stidham. This was pretty. They were so antsy, these inside linebackers. You can watch them right here. They're both going to come on the play, both inside linebackers. Miss block inside, and it's over. Chandler Cox had no shot at getting number three. And I, I was thinking that Auburn might go four downs in that situation right there. And you get the sack and you're forced to punt it. Marshall's kick. Fair catch called for and taken around the 17 or 18 yard line by Terry Godwin. And we got a flag down again back at the line of scrimmage. Smart about whether or not to Political decline it. on the kicking team. Five players in the backfield. The five-yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the kick. First down. You know, and I think that's a great call by Kirby right there. Why risk another punt and right. dropping it? Because Auburn was able to bleed enough out of time. I think George, George is going to be very conservative here. Chance of UGA right now because the dogs are going to take it to the locker room. Halfway through the SEC championship and up by a field goal. End of the first half with a score, Georgia 10, Auburn 7. We'll be back with a Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway after this message from your local station. Well, maybe we'll have some new legends two quarters from now. 10-7. Georgia will get the football to start the third quarter. Different feel, isn't it? Well, it was 16-7 to at halftime Auburn three weeks ago. Yeah. What's the difference? Big difference here, feeling this football game. You know, the defensive line and offensive line for Georgia that got dominated, they're dominating. Kick will go to Hardman, and he'll take a knee. So Georgia will bring it out to the 25. Gus Malzahn said we kicked the dog out of them. <laughs> right then, Georgia said, we want to play Auburn, and we want to show that we ain't going to get kicked out again. And they haven't so far, that's for sure. Sonny Michelle got seven on the opening carry of the third quarter. Second down and three. He'll get it again, and he ran by the first guy, and he's got a first down. Well, this is what Gary was talking about after the first meeting. Gus Malzahn says Auburn whipped the dog crap out of Georgia. This is what it sounded like. We whipped the dog crap out of Georgia. <laughs> and then Kirby was asked, how do you sit? Do you sit well with that? He said, well, when you perform the way we did, you're in the right to say whatever you want. It was a brilliant move by Kirby Smart. He started setting the stage and challenges players and say, if you want to change the future, you got to start today, not when we start the game. Here's a flea flicker that didn't work the first game. It's not going to work here either. So they tried that three weeks ago, and they didn't get it blocked, and they didn't get it blocked again. Javaris Davis will be one of the corners, and then Jamel Dean on the other corner. Let's see if they try to go that way on third down and four. Godwin in motion. From fires complete. I don't know if it's a first down to Godwin, though. Ooh, it's going to be really close. I think it's going to be just short. And I thought... You know, remember Robert Foster last week for Alabama? Yep. Remember, they can't see that yellow line like we can. If Foster would have dove forward, he might have made it. And on this play, the same thing. A little dive to his left could have been a first down. And, uh, you know, you react the way you do. It's live out there. And that time, they didn't quite get to the sticks. And Georgia. Oh, you got to punt. Or try to draw him off sides. You can't afford to give Auburn the ball at the 50-yard line. So here comes Nizelik. Wideouts, two stacked to each side for Stidham. 
Roquan Smith blitzes up the middle. Stidham throws late and got it complete. And there's Ryan Davis. And this time Georgia doesn't get him down. That might be the play of the day so far for Jerry. He rides up in the pocket, feels it, sees the red, the white jerseys coming at him, and makes the big first down throw. Maybe his best play of the day. And when they get a play like that, they go in a hurry. And here they are in a toss to carry on Johnson. And he got to the edge. Roquan Smith will run him unceremoniously out of bounds. And the Auburn sideline looking for a flag doesn't get one. Well, they finally found some space for Carrion Johnson to get to the outside and run. But watch, again, no straight arm. He's kind of running, protecting himself as he runs. Carrion Johnson said, hurry up. Play clock at four. They get the snap. Delayed blitz by the dogs. Stidham throws. Wide open Davis. Another Auburn first down inside the 20. I'll tell you what, when the running game just gives Auburn anything, Jared Stidham, accuracy on those passes is just amazing to watch. Now, will they blitz on this one? Last time they played it safe. Last down on second down. Doesn't look like a blitz, does it? Nope. nope. A late one comes from Roquan Smith, and it's going to pay off because Trenton Thompson just got enough of an ankle on Stidham to bring him down. As it is, the all-time leading scorer in SEC history. Set for a 31-yard field goal attempt. His holder's been there for every one of those points. Snaps a little high, and the kick is blocked. And Dominic Sanders has got it for Georgia. And this was just a mush rush up the inside. A huge play by the Georgia special teams. Oh, by the way, everyone has reacted. It looked like it was just a push. Too much of a push inside over the middle. And then, let, yes, that was just too much of a rush inside. He got the block. Hawkins Muckle is the guy that got it. And a 31-yard field goal that you thought was a chip shot for that guy is blocked by Georgia. Well, you know, that's six points. Remember in the for game one, Georgia left points on the field. Now Auburn has left six points on the field. Well, by Daquan Hawkins Muckle, right before that timeout, has given Georgia the ball back with Nick Chubb on the run. And Chubb goes for 10 or 11. Probably his best carry of the day. That's eight carries, 44 yards for Chubb. And there's a flag down. Remember earlier I said Jeb Blazevich got put into the backfield by Holland. This time he gets the key block on the outside. Not sure what the call was. Blazevich gets a big time block. There he is, 83. Foul. Block below the waist of number 13 offense. Penalty's 15 yards. First down. And I'll tell you, when you're coming from the backfield, that's usually a legal block. I think the officials might have thought 13 was coming from the outside in. This might be a tough call for Georgia, a tough break. Right at the Georgia, they made the push, but it looked slow with the naked eye. And I don't know if the timing was perfect for Carlson. From on second and 14, pumps once, goes complete, and the ball's out, incomplete. Wims had it and couldn't hold it. Defensive line felt they, they could dominate third and long. It's happened a couple times early, but since then, nothing. You saw they were only third and three for 14 last time around. Here's the short throw to DeAndre Swift. And Swift gets leveled at the 30-yard line. But another bad penalty. Moon over Atlanta through the roof of Mercedes-Benz Stadium. That penalty gave Auburn their opening salvo at the 46-yard line. Oh, Roquan Smith says yeah. hello to Devin Barrett. I remember in game one, I was saying that Roquan Smith was not catching our eye as much. He's been catching our eye and delivering tackles in this game. A very physical sideline-to-sideline -side game for Roquan. Nate Craig Myers flushes out of the Auburn backfield. Stidham backpedals to throw. Getting flushed out of the pocket, and now he's going to run with it. 
And he's going to get away with it. First down run by Stidham. Natrez Patrick was putting on the pressure, but Stidham shows his wheels there. And he ran right through it. First down at the Georgia 41. Carry on Johnson back, flanking him in the shotgun. They fake it to him. They slide it out to Ryan Davis. He dropped it and he had some, he had some green in front of him, that's for sure. <laughs> Where it's still second down and 10 at the 41. Play action. Stidham wants to throw back out there and he one hops it out to Cam Martin incomplete. They back out of it this time. Stidham hopping around in the pocket. Has to throw low and away and incomplete intended for Davis. So three Aaron throws in a row there by Jared Stidham. Well, you've got your scenarios, right? It's getting less complimented, complicated by the second. <laughs> From quick play fake and the throw complete. Out to Godwin and Terry. Godwin's got it at midfield and into Auburn territory. Could you do me a favor and confirm that I wrote on my board, throws well to the sideline? I saw it. <laughs> They fake the end around. Fromm's going to throw it short. Out to Miko Hardman. Well, great decisions by the quarterback, Jake Fromm. Second and four. Nick Chubb ran into his own guy. Bounced off and Nick Chubb on his way down inside the 25. Might have been the best thing he could have done is run into his own blocker. He pinballed off of that and picked up 20 yards. George and Auburn are trying to decide things on the field right here in Atlanta. And a quick slant's broken up. Intended for Wims. It's going to be third down and eight. Wims coming inside. Man-to-man -man coverage. You get no easy throws. And at the end of the play, Deshaun Davis is very lucky. He missed with that uh, launch with his helmet right there. If that would have gone head-to-head, -head, he might have been out of the game. Wims doesn't have a catch today. That one was too far out in front of him. He's been their big play guy. They like to go 50-50 ball to the outside on these. Empty backfield. Going to flip it out to DeAndre Swift. Can he get any blockers? Not enough. Maybe to the 18. Really surprised. Without Carlton Davis in the game, they're great man-to-man -man quarterback corner. Why hasn't Georgia tried to throw the 50-50 ball to Wims? He's so good at it. This will be a 35-yard field goal attempt to try to stretch Georgia's lead to six. Looking for his 15th field goal of the year. Up and good. Georgia tacks on three more. So the dogs have a six-point advantage. We've got 126 left, third quarter. Cut in half pretty much, but we still got a quarter to go. Stidham going deep. Slayton's out there, and he overshot him. Pretty good coverage by DeAndre Baker. I'd be shocked if they snap this. Looks like they're going to try to. I guess they will. Last play of the quarter. Stidham's going to run with it. And he's got another first down run. Took a big hit at the end of it. A big play. Boy, his legs. You know, I have to admit, Gus Malzahn told us yesterday, we were talking to Coach Malzahn, don't undersell Jarrett's athletic ability. He can make plays. And I'm going, well, you're not going to call any runs for him, are you? Oh, yeah. It's all on the line. We played three quarters in Atlanta. Six rank Georgia leads number two Auburn 13 to seven. Who's going to win the SEC title? We got 15 more minutes to figure it out. We'll return to Atlanta right after this message and a word from your local station. Seven Auburn with the football at its own 47 yard line with a first down. The give is to carry on Johnson. And the ball is out. Yep. And Roquan Smith has got it for Georgia. Another costly turnover. Much like the strip sack earlier of Stidham. And the Dogs have got the ball back. So Auburn scores on their first possession of the game. Seven possession cents. No points.
Let's see who got it. Maybe Lorenzo Carter. Yep. Yes, he did. Marion Johnson can't really say it's. We don't know which shoulder it is. We haven't been told a lot. Did not control that ball and protected it. You could see the ball swinging just as Carter's hand came out. So Bellamy and Carter, the two bookheads who came back to Georgia for one more year and produced two turnovers in this game. They call themselves the Wolf Pack. The Dog Pack in this case has got the ball back at the 39 of Auburn. Carry on Johnson beside himself on that Auburn sideline. First down, and it's Fromm on the keeper. Broke one tackle, Jake Fromm, all the way to the 22-yard line. Well, Javon Wims, number six, hasn't caught a lot of passes, but he caught a big block to the outside. Left part of your screen, watch that block to the left side. That's what allowed an extra 8-10 yards for Jeff Fromm. I've been forced to blitz, but now you wonder if they have to do it. It's a toss on the end around to Hardman. And he gets tagged out at the 18-yard line and a flag. Looked like it might have been a little late, and I think the officials are going to agree. That one little bit, it's tough when you get somebody on the sideline. Personal foul. They hit about out of bounds on the defense. Fell in from half the distance from goal line to man on the run with an automatic first down. Chubb back in there for Georgia. As the deep back behind from on second and goal at the six. And he's going to throw from back shoulder. Got it. Godwin. Touchdown, flag down. Offside, lined up in the neutral zone, number 91 of the defense. The penalties decline, the result of the play is a touchdown. Well, I called for the 50-50 throw to the outside. The fade on the other end of the field. We're going to get it down at the bottom right here. See it. Throw it to the outside, back shoulder, he's got it. And I'll tell you, Brad, in this building, that's a tough catch because at that angle, the lights are brutal in this building. So the fumble by Carrion Johnson becomes a touchdown, and Georgia goes for two. Charlie Werner, the up back in the eye. Now they empty the whole backfield. Four receivers down here on the bottom for Fromm. He's going the other way with it, and he's got it to Godwin again for two. Back to back, fades to the outside. Remember, Carlton Davis, their best corner, is not in the game. A guy that was the number one rusher as far as yards per carry per game, I should say. Not today, though. And not 100%, obviously. Chandler Cox, the fullback, comes in motion, sets up in the backfield. Quick throw is too far in front of Eli Stove. Well, it does. Remember when last game it looked like Georgia was frustrated. Now it looks like Auburn's getting frustrated. The last seven possessions of the game before this one, four punts, two fumbles, and one blocked field goal. Since their opening touchdown, that's seven possessions. This is the eighth since the opening drive. 40% on the third down conversions today. This one's big, third and six. Here they come again. They're going to get the linebackers coming right inside. Here they come up the middle. Roquan Smith is going to force Stidham up in the pocket, and he throws incomplete. Intended for Craig Myers. Yeah, there's no way Mel Tucker and Kirby Smart are going to change up now. That inside blitz has given Auburn problems. It's given Jared Stidham problems when he moves up into the pocket. You can see Carrion Johnson does a good job with his block, but an inaccurate throw from Jared. It's time. No. Give him time, and he showed what he can do. In that game, it was the offense and defensive lines, and they've come to play today. Sure have. 
DeAndre Swift spins his way across the first down marker. Nick Chubb, we talked about it. The previous possession, he just went from three to two and passed Darren McFadden. And now, that? Herschel's the only guy in front. That's sensational. Couldn't happen to a better guy, You're right? right. Small town Georgia, best friends with the big city guy, Sony Michelle, their roommates. And Georgia, after only 46 yards in the first meeting, grinding it out or trying to. Vernon and I did that game when he hurt that knee. It was like you know, watching him. I felt so bad, but to see him play like he has now, one of the great stories that we've seen. Kirby took a timeout prior to the play. Not sure if he wouldn't like it back. Charge timeout has been granted. But he leads 21 to 7 with 10:46 remaining in the ball game. It's the SEC championship. The Georgia Bulldogs and the Auburn Tigers. Stidham end zone touchdown. Backside pressure. The ball is out. Georgia has the football from end zone wide open. Not a. Georgia and Auburn, a rematch for the ages. And this one has gone much differently than three weeks ago at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Georgia with a lead, 21-7, 10.46 remaining in the ballgame. Dogs with a first down at their own 36-yard line. Maybe the biggest football game Georgia has played in in 35 years. Hard to argue with that, isn't it? They, this has uh, been a magical season. One blemish, and they're getting a mulligan and taking advantage of it. Swift with Fromm in the backfield. He'll get the carry. DeAndre Swift, and he's fast, and he's maybe gone. DeAndre Swift, touchdown. Sixty-four yards for the freshman for the touchdown. And you know, Javon Wims makes another big block on this play. He's not caught a pass in the game, but he has contributed big time. You know, the second fastest guy on the field on that play, Kirby Smart. <laughs> he saw the play break out. Here's the block by Wims right here. That's what broke it. Wims blocks, but at the top of the screen, watch Kirby. He's out of the screen. Wims is, here comes Kirby. He's going to come back into picture. Hey, he was all SEC in 1998. Captain of the team. There he, is. There he goes. <laughs> and there goes DeAndre Swift. 75 yards in just three plays. And the freshman has given the dogs a three touchdown lead for the SEC championship. Clark could have been Bellamy. All oh, that front four is looking like the Auburn front four from the first game. I'll tell you, the defensive lines in this conference, when they get rolling, it's a different brand of football. Third down at 10. Here comes that blitz from Roquan Smith up the middle again. Stidham has time. And incomplete intended for Davis. And it's broken up by Tyreek McGee. Fourth down. Formula that Cheney, the offense wants now, take time off the clock and make first downs. The huddle management right now by the freshman's been sensational, taking it down to the last couple seconds. Oh, they're going to throw. throw. Bad throw. On he's, third and two, they chose to throw. They, he's earned the respect of the play caller. He had the easy throw to make the first down, and he pulled the string. Isaac Dada is wide open for a first down, and he aimed it. Ooh. All of us quarterbacks have been there. <laughs> That's, that's what even when your wife or, or, or kids say, what was that, Dad? <laughs> Here's the punt of flags now. Georgia covers the punt around the 38, but again, a penalty marker on the play. Right, is this like the sixth penalty we've had on a punt so far in the game? We haven't had a clean one. Not too many of them. Oh, jeez. 
We have an illegal substitution. We something? are. It's going to be an automatic first down, too. Illegal substitution on the receiving team. 12 men on the field at the snap. The five-yard penalty at the previous spot results in a first down. A gift for the dogs. Georgia with the football back at the 41. They're going to give it to Brian Harrion on an end around. And Harrion getting in the act. First down. Pick up of 12. It was all the plays that they gave away against Auburn. He said, don't get me wrong, Auburn earned a lot of their success, but we also shot ourselves in the foot. If we can clean up those freebies, we'll be good to go today. And so far, just one turnover. I know they had some of the penalties, but they were those aggressive penalties, so he was okay with it. And you've just got DeAndre Swift, who might end up with more rushing yards than Sony Michelle or Nick Chubb, going for another first down. Beautiful look at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta with just over five minutes remaining in the SEC Championship. Georgia in command, leading 28-7. to seven. They got Michael Barnett in. There's a fullback in the eye here. As Holyfield this time does get a first uh, great down. Great run. Great run right there. He knew he only needed that short yardage. He was selling out to the fact that he was going to spin or do whatever he had to find that one crack and then spin into it. Avoid that last possible tackle and fall forward. You don't want five yards. You don't want ten yards. You want one yard. And he got it. And the son of a four-time heavyweight champion of the world from Atlanta who's got a new statue going up downtown here. That might have been the knockout punch by the champ's son. <laughs> well, I think he's already down on the count for that. I think Auburn was, but is there in MMA, do they do more than that? <laughs> they tap out? Can you tap out? Maybe. Here he is again, this time wrapped up for a loss. I, I feel bad about throwing that out to you, but let me uh, say this. I don't think the committee should take this game into effect at all. That led to a Georgia touchdown, and thus... We have the score we have. Georgia gave up a lot of yards three weeks ago, and only half of that today. Season high against this veteran, remember, dominating front four defense. Most of the eyeball experts were saying that Auburn's defense was too good. Yep. You know, that, that's the trouble with that eyeball test, I'm telling you. <laughs> you don't really know what to do sometimes. I will say this, thinking out loud, watching Jake Fromm finish off this drive here and Georgia win this SEC championship. And Fromm's going to throw in and out of the hands of Wims. He hasn't had a catch, and I think because he blocked so well, they were giving some sugar to yeah. the receiver, right? I think so. Even though Georgia didn't score, Gary, on that last drive, remember they took it over with 8.24 left, and there was a penalty on the punt that gave them the automatic first down, so they chewed six minutes basically off the clock. Didn't need any more points, actually. Two thousand eight was the last team from the SEC East to win the championship. It was the Florida Gators, and as Gary said earlier, last time Georgia was able to do it was two thousand five. But think about it: Georgia's going to get in the college football playoff, and the last time they had a chance to get into something to win a national championship, they lost the Sugar Bowl to Penn State when they were number one. Yeah, and you know, in two thousand, you know what the key is: in two thousand and five, Kirby was the running back coach. At Georgia. Well, he's back as the big man now. Here's a throwback screen out to Slayton. Oh, it's collared over there by Baker. And remember how the game started. Georgia challenged those quick screens to the outside without a healthy carry on Johnson and no quick screens to the outside. This offense was neutralized. They'll be able to run the ball. I don't think Jake Fromm is going to get stage fright. No, nope, not anymore. I don't, I don't think so. Not that he ever had it, but he certainly won't have it now with those numbers in the day that he has had. You know, you're going to get healthy in this time frame. You're going to have Chubb and Michelle as healthy as they were maybe all, all year for that game. It's a solidly built team. It'll take a special team to beat them. Sony Michelle will have to wait and see about his injury. Whether that'll, he's got a month to heal. Jared Stidham going down at the 30-yard line. DeAndre Walker with the exclamation point on the Auburn quarterback. George is a minute away from their 12th win of the season. It's only the third time in their history that would happen. One of Mark Rick's teams that won a Sugar Bowl went 12 and 1. Vince Dooley's undefeated national champions with Herschel Walker won 12 and lost none. And now George is going to be 12 and 1 with the playoff looming.
Third down and give me some help for Jared Stidham. And it's fourth down. Jonathan Ledbretter bringing the heat that time. Just kind of running through the top teams. If Clemson wins tonight, the next time we see Georgia, they'll be playing Oklahoma. Oklahoma will be number two. Georgia will be number three. Either Wisconsin, Ohio State, or Alabama will be in that fourth spot. That's it. We're down to just those teams. Miami obviously is in it still, but if Wisconsin wins, you pretty much got the matchups. What a difference 21 days makes if you're a Georgia fan. Stidham, last chance, and it's incomplete. Yeah, that kind of summed it up right there, didn't yep, it? it did. The headset can come off. The SEC championship visors can go on pretty soon if they have some made up. And he's still working the sideline. Well, I think he was working information he got that was wrong. That looked like somebody in the inform sports information department was telling him something that, you know, maybe somebody's a yard away from a record or something. And he said, why are you telling me that now? Well, he just got a bath. Kirby Smart in his second year has taken Georgia to the SEC championship. And they do it basically on their home turf here in Georgia. There you go, there's the headline tomorrow. <laughs> and as I said, this SEC conference is tough on coaches, especially when a guy like Kirby Smart walks in and takes the championship in year two. Everybody else goes, uh, why can't you do that? A freshman quarterback, a great running attack, a tough defense, and the biggest win for Georgia in decades. And now what will the future hold for that guy? Will we see Gus Malzahn continuing to coach Auburn, Auburn or will he be at Arkansas? We know one thing, Kirby Smart's not going anywhere. And his resilient Georgia Bulldogs a unanimous winner today. Allie's with the winning coach. Coach, congratulations on the first SEC championship for Georgia since 2005. What was the difference this time from it was three real weeks simple. ago? Composure and physicality. That's all it was about. Composure and physicality and great kids like this. 31 seniors on this roster with Nick Chubb being one of them. They trusted you. He came back for his senior year. What can you say about what they've meant to this program? Oh, it meant everything to this program. The leadership that he and Sony Michelle and the rest of these seniors have provided for us, it's simple. And this is an awesome win for our program, for our university, and a lot of people around the state of Georgia. Thank you, Coach. Congrats, Nick. You. Glad you came back. Thank you. I'm so glad I came back. I bet you are, guys. <laughs> Man, a few words, but a lot of yards. <laughs> a lot of yards. Second only to Herschel. Nick Chubb and the Georgia Bulldogs are the Southeastern Conference champions for 2017. Congratulations to the Georgia Bulldogs of Southeastern Conference champs. They're going to the playoffs, and there will be a party in this state tonight. 76,534 saw it. That's going to wrap it up for us. For Gary Danderson, Allie LaForce, Brad Nessler saying so long from Atlanta. Dogs win 28-7. College football postgame show powered by Ram is up next right after these messages.